Hello, this is the August 24th Beehive Call with Santiago, Andrew, John, Jan, and myself, Michael. I'm sure others will trickle in. We are looking at PCI pass-through issues on AMD. Santiago is experiencing those, and I'm doing my best to represent, uh, reproduce them. And if anything, we may have an issue tied to a supermicro motherboard that is also an issue visible on Proxmox. Where did we leave off, gentlemen? Jan, you had some feedback for Santiago. Remember that motherboards basically cannot pass through every device on its own. Sometimes you have basically bundles of devices you have to pass through together because they're uh, translated together by the uh, IO virtualization hardware. And they, they share hardware resources and can only be passed to all or nothing, which can be really annoying with onboard peripherals if you can't pass through your set, set and say, uh, set and USB controller without losing, let's say, your audio or something on a workstation. Uh, do you have other example uh, controller types that might be problematic? As far as I uh, understood it at the time, basically, Almost anything can be bundled that way. Sometimes two slots have to be passed through to the same uh, guest and so on, or not at all. But I wouldn't expect Suppo that to lead to a crashing behavior. No, but uh, if you yeah. pass through one half and it doesn't catch us and prevent it, maybe the other half just stops working. Mm. Because only the device is uh, yeah. gone for all intents and purposes from its old... Uh, yeah. Security demand. So Santiago, I understand so, you've tried NIX and NVMe devices. Yeah. So the, the issue that no, go, go ahead, please. Another issue I've seen is that some cards don't reset completely if you pass them through. Basically, what happens is that there only a function level reset is performed, and it's not expanded correctly, so that the driver may not attach. The, I've encountered this, for example, with Intel Gigabit cards. You can pass mm. them through, but it only works the first time. Once you reboot the guest, uh, the driver will refuse to attach because the hardware is not in the initial yeah. reset state. It would be in. And... So we, what we are seeing is, um, so we have a few super micro there and that we are trying to collect the information with Michael. And in all of those, we have Intel 710s. Um, and we are doing PCI path through on, on, on most of them. Now we found out that one of the AMDs, like I reboot the machine, or so the machine boots up, I start a VM, I pass a PCI path through, it works, everything's fantastic, I can put traffic, and then maybe 24, 48, 48 hours later, boom, the host OS starts saying, I lose connectivity to NVMe, I lose connectivity to the other Broadcom card that is not pass PCI path through. And of course, the, the device, the, the box to, um, ends restarting. So I reboot the server or I shut down, start it again, start the VM with PCI path through, and immediately I get a crash on the, on the server reboots. And that's after a, um, a cold power off and on? Yeah, yeah, cold power over ILO, just power off, power on. Of, it's true that it's, I, I'm not pulling the cable out because this lab is remote, it's far away. Um, but the, 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 the most annoying thing is like, I cannot, it's not something that is, you know, it's, it's just always fail at boot and I, then it will, that it will make sense. It's like, okay, I cannot pa PCI pass through this box and, or this specific device. But sometimes it's work and it's passing 40 gigs of traffic, um, moving everything's okay. And then suddenly bye-bye, it stops working. Well, how so do you I started doing some- Your initial clean state, do you, is it after it's powered down for a few days or yeah. hours? Because if I, you- if you fail on the second reboot, how long between a successful boot and a failed reboot? It, it could be that I rebooted three times and tried to start the machine and it fails. It, immediately when I do the PCI path through, I lose connectivity to the NVMe on the host OS, for example. Okay. And then the fourth time I do it, it just works without any issues until you know, you X amount of right. updating the BIOS on the main board? Yep. Maybe it's just a bug? Correct. Yeah, I did that one, I think, two days ago. And it was like really promising. I updated. It was working solid. And I saw 
uh, well, it's one of the things that um, Michael put there, it was 48 hours working right, and then suddenly died. Lost co it lost connectivity. So I don't know if it's just a local issue on the, ma on the machine or, um, or what. Are you able to capture the crashes in some way via the IPMI? Yeah, look, if he, I don't know, Michael, if you want to open the bug ID, that, I, there is somebody else having the same issue with FreeBSD Beehive. And also people from Proxmox, they were complaining with Rome, AMD Rome CPUs um, having the same issue. Okay, um, so something about a reset. Dumb, dumb. That's error, yeah. That's on my one, but it's, I have the same error as, as this person that. Okay, let me let me compare those just one sec. And welcome, Patrick. I definitely want to talk BeehiveCon. Let me know if you are on a time crunch and we can squeeze that in. Um, boom, 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 boom. And then the Proxmox link might be over here. Epic Rome. Let me take a peek at that. Where the heck? Uh, maybe tab lottery. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so on. Epic, we have vert I waiting, waiting, giving up. Uh, let me start at the top. Oh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so vert IOPC waiting, waiting, giving up. Kernel version, yep. Um, AMD SP3 driver, what might that mean? Nope. Not going to happen. Okay, so do you see uh, specifically waiting and giving up, or let's compare? No, no. no. I, I see, for example, NVMe trying to to reconnect and say, "Come on, time out, retrying, retrying." I don't know how many times, and then giving up, and then of course it reboots. Um, I think if if you go back to the bug uh, on okay. FreeBSD, I attach one of the outputs from my machine, okay. and and there is a bit more information. There. Okay, excellent. Uh, um, but uh, attachment, I think I'll go pass through details. Yeah. Uh, point me to the link. Oh. Uh, yeah, you need to click click on the uh, on the behind up up. Oh, hello. Not that. Oh, there you go. I see. Add an attachment. I'm missing attachments. I'm blind. Um. Uh, I think if you go to, oh, you can click. Oh, attachments. It's under um, passion. Oh, yeah. the, the title is the same. Yep. Yeah, okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay. So I put some info, some information from the machine, so people know what's going on. Uh, have you spent some time in the UEFI slash BIOS settings, toggling random? maybe related flags to find if there's a working configuration. Um, I try swapping some things, but again, you know, it's like I change something and then suddenly 24 hours it's... solid and it's like, okay, I got it. And then it's like, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 48 hours is an annoying window. Yeah, look, for example, there you can see I'm, I'm, I'm doing a PCI path through of, of the Intels, yeah? But then suddenly on the host OS, the Broadcom stops responding. Yeah, I lose connectivity to the Broadcom. Oh, and oh. sometimes it's just on the NVMe. Mm -hmm. oh, it does sound cursed. It's like something is corrupting, yeah, <laughs> getting corrupt. So, but in does it fail if you don't start or stop new guests? So if you just spin up your VMs and let them running, does it still happen or does it only happen? It still <laughs> happen, yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Today we were with five. I, I yesterday I put five, I created the side of I pass five functions to different five virtual machines and it was solid, mm -hmm. solid, solid. And then somebody called me and said, Hey, Santi, I cannot access the server. I was like, shit, again. Yeah, okay. Okay, have you tried 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 looping audio? Yeah, looping audio again. That was great. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. No, My can. highest yep. quality audio device uh, does the looping. <laughs> and I have a new interface <laughs> arriving. So I'll repeat my question. Santiago, have you done this also with uh, DevCTL or only um, at boot time? 
Uh, I try both. I, the, try I both. always use the FCDL. Yeah, but I try the other one just in case. Yeah, uh, and the same story. The question, okay. Uh, great. Um, uh, and okay. Other clever ideas from Santiago, specifically on that machine and the 24 hour to 48 hour window, which is, yeah, not so fun. Um, Find a torture test which shortens the window to a point where you can properly debug mm. it. Yeah. I have a similar server, an exact server that is running Linux. I need to yeah. convince the people to swap the disk between those. Yeah. Uh, so I can rule out a hardware issue. Um, but it's going to take me a few weeks. Ah, it is Linux running a hypervisor. Um, it's an EV. They're doing training on, you know, the virtualized routers and those kind of things on, on their machine. So I need to wait until they finish to free that box and, and swap it up. Yeah. But they are basically, they use KVM. Little KVM. Yeah. Okay. Um, you have one of these super microsystems or several? Two of those that are either can you drop us a motherboard and CPU configuration? You can grab the motherboard yep. from DMID code without having to like <laughs> Yeah, it's attached on the bug. Is it? Let me get that. I missed it. I'm sorry. Um it's okay. I was it oh nicely done. I, nice I need to add the chassis, maybe more information about the chassis. one works, but 13.2 doesn't, yeah. Bisecting is probably the way to go. True, but he got 48 hours out of it rather than like. Yeah. Then it takes a success. few weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah, yes. So DMI decode is um, here. I'm not seeing an X11 or X10 or X somebody, A series. Uh, I, I will confirm the number now. Let me go to the aisle of the box. And... Okay. Yeah. Uh, unless it's on the. Oh, here we go. Okay, no. Okay, that I'll make note of. Thank you. Yeah, I did only the processor, the DMI decode, so I can do the chassis or and get more, more info. Run a DMI decode dash type one and a dash type uh, two or three. One and three. Yeah, it, I, there's the model and then there's the chassis. I'm, I'm looking for the actual super micro model number that you would Google on a like on their website. Cool. So will this help? I just put and in the most useful the... way to get that oh, is yeah, thank from you. the IPMI web interface. Yeah, you can. You might be able to get through through an FRU list. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. There you can have the uh, SKU numbers and so on. Okay. Okay. So we're talking. But this uh, product name is precise enough, probably. Uh, I... Did yeah. you build the chassis yourself, or is it a recommended no, no. chassis and power supply combination? Like a super server? It's yeah, all a because... super micro from, from the shelf, I would say, no, no. There is no customization. Okay. Okay, so no uh, underpowered power supply no. or... All right. Or maybe so it's a missing yes, power cable yes. or something. That's an interesting one. I, I was not thinking about that, yeah. It, what, what's the question? Maybe power issue, he's saying that it gets. Maybe uh, I've seen crashes if you don't plug in the additional PCI power uh, injectors into the main board if you have lots of PCI cards, where you have to basically inject 12 volt close to the PCIe slots if you have lots of cards. Yeah, I say 500 watts on the potentially low and how much ram is on that because that might that drop 500 power. watts is fine for the box unless he has big gpus yeah. in it okay okay the cpu I'm is spinning a lot of drives typically um anyway yeah, you don't have a lot of spinning drives i suspect no, right? not on this bad boy um that said we're talking okay so there's so... your model number Okay, so yeah, power it is a possibility, and that would explain why it drops after you know um, a certain amount of time. I wonder if you have any monitors you could watch 
for that, be it in the IPMI or otherwise? The problem is that if it's that, you probably won't have a fast enough voltage sensor close to where the voltage drops. The other problem would be that you have voltage drop within the main board because the copper traces just aren't thick enough. And it would only happen during load spikes, which at the poll rates of the IPMI voltage measurement, you just would probably never see because they basically it's similar to trying to uh, see a multi megahertz signal with your multimeters voltage function. It, it just doesn't work that way. Okay. It's the wrong kind of measurement. So okay. let's perhaps get our last questions and then pivot to uh, broader pass through issues that apply on any hardware no. if they remain. I mean, something must be going on because again, there was this guy also complaining with the same error, and I saw another bug on the PR from with the same output. So you can code it for system event log uh, or check for uh, machine check exceptions. I was checking right now, and there is nothing apart from so MCE yeah, log. And if you have messages, the usual tools can't decode. Use the web interface for the OEM uh, event log entries. Let me check, but I'm, I'm not seeing anything on the event logs. So uh, if you to add something like IPMI to SIL list or something, so yeah, yeah. an event log, and yeah. there are undecodable ones you have to use the web interface because as vendors do yeah. add <laughs> a custom yeah. uh, type length value. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the aisle of the, of the box of the BMC, yeah. and, and it's, I, I see errors. I mean, errors, sorry, I see logs. But nothing with error. It's just like attempts to log and those kind of things. Okay. But there is no like power issues or errors. And on the, okay. all, the, all the health checks on the systems are seems to be yeah. okay. I, yeah. Regarding because power, I, do you have a super lightweight device like a USB controller you can pass through? Yeah, I that, should be able to do that. Yeah. Power doesn't sound like it if it's a properly built system. Yeah. This is only something which would help me either in a YOLO box with dying hardware or if it's misassembled or specified mm -hmm. if you really try to run the system off a 300 watt power supply, of course it would fail. But uh, the other problem usually, is usually a power problem will show up in the baseboard management controller via the web. Mm, yeah. Yeah, everything's in green and yeah. also saying that the peak consumption was 170 watts like in 2022. So I would say that, yeah, it's, okay. it's not heavy loaded on power. Trying to put uh, torture tests on it could help something like M prime on the CPUs or stress okay. energy. Just to basically put this box under high memory and CPU load to heat it up so that it's running hot. Uh, to load the components, do maybe scrub the ZFS pool at the same time, just basically try to load everything, run a network benchmark. So you have everything under a modest to a torture level load, okay. so that everything is running hot, just to see if it accelerates the problem to the point yeah. where you can debug it better. Yeah. Throw in a build world okay. just to be safe. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I will do a build world and set the CPU. Yeah, build world is fine as well. Hits. Yeah. Yeah. I'll start um, it now. Okay, so that's this. one motherboard model. So let's broaden this to other issues. Are Are you still having? Like this sounds like a firmware slash chipset uh, specific problem. Hmm. If it's only on ROM and also known to be a problem on virtualization focused Linux distributions, what would be worth checking if it's someone has found a workaround for Linux or a software solution if they have a quirk for this uh, generation of either CPU or chipset, this would be something FreeBSD could look at to port the bug fix or workaround. Okay. Well, it's uh, a workaround. And Let's if take there's a look. A, something a user yeah. can do, like toggle this random, doesn't look related setting in the BIOS and suddenly it works that would probably also port of FreeBSD. Mm -hmm. They mentioned something, John, in one of the page, um, I found something that they said the, the well-known 
PCI reset FLK or FLP on AMD. And I know that some people were changing parameters on 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 the Linux side, but yeah. Add no, this to those, a Linux no threads were so convoluted. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No function level reset. Function level. PC Express, no function level reset, and then probably vendor and product ID tuples. So, so maybe for BCS, yes, a similar selection of crocs mm. to, but all of these function level resets should only happen when the guests re or reboot or something changes. They shouldn't occur during normal use. So it doesn't really explain all of it unless the device is in a misconfigured state after the first time this happened or the second time, and it's only a matter of time for something to collide mm. or something. Yeah. Also from the logs, it says page fault for EVT on, I don't know yeah. if that rings a bell, Jan, or somebody uh, that knows mm -hmm. the code internally. I, I just put the message on the chat every yep. time. It, yeah. Sounds frustrating. <laughs> And I had something which would look a little bit like it. It was just a simple fix in the driver to make sure it resets the hardware again. Hmm. Uh, but your problem sounds a lot uh, more involved. I mean, good thing is a lab machine doesn't matter, but it's just to try to, to fix the bug only, or if there is a bug or find the issue, but no, it's not affecting any system or any live. Well, production. yeah, but it could if, if it comes to that. It could, exactly. Yeah, just to make sure that we, yeah, yeah. Uh, memory management as suspect, the whole system becomes potentially corrupted beyond belief. The only <laughs> time I irretrievably lost a Z pool for anything but hard disk crash was a bad TMA engine in a wireless card just swapping the upper and lower half of a physical address. Mm. So it just DMA to the wrong address and overwrote the already checked some data, <laughs> which is something you can't defend against without an IO MU. And if your IO MU is misconfigured or your interrupt routing, all bets are off. Yeah, okay. So yeah. Santiago, anyway, did you see down. any syscontrols related to FLR or F? What was the other? No, I try. I check all the yeah. PCI resets and those kind of things, and couldn't find anything. But okay. hey, maybe somebody knows how to do it. Well, I just look for those keywords like FLR and such. Maybe they yeah, yeah, yeah. come and to life for the that. The vendor product ID uh, tuples could also be worth looking for in the source code. Hmm. Let me find out where these are, or just in other error messages. The two uh, um, sixteen-bit. Uh, number for vendor and product. OK, well, uh, hopefully there is an answer hiding in there. Thanks a lot, guys, for the Hey, audience. of course. And so yeah. OK, uh, then are you having other SRIO v pass-through issues? I know you mentioned mm. Intel drivers and Broadcom drivers. Broadcom wow. has been fixed. Oh. Uh, I think Warner Lodge mentioned yesterday. And there was a problem actually in IFLIB, IFLIB, that was causing these issues and it was no affecting way. several drivers. Huh. Okay. I will ping you the, give me one sec, I will ping you there. Yeah, um, if you've got it, great. I mean, IFLIB was yeah, quite a dramatic big... shift with yes. various fallout. So a lot of people are confirming that the issues resolved for them. I tested today and also it's gone. Great. Um, yeah, shoot any links for that. I'm watching the chat. Yeah, I will. Awesome. Oh. Um, and, what is it? Yeah, okay, go ahead. I got it. Cool. So... That one, that's Thank the one that you. is fixing across different net drivers. Yeah. Uh, if it was to blame. Yeah. Unpossible. Okay, so. 
Uh, if the, if the VLAN changes, thank you, Kevin. And did that, just to reconfirm, trickle into both Intel and Broadcom drivers? I test only the Broadcom. On the Intel, I didn't have any issues apart the apart of the SLIOV, but that's that's another problem. Okay, it's not related to to this. So, and the review is from what today? Okay, great. So then, yeah. Intel SLIOV, anything specific? Uh, yes, Eric. Um, I think it's Chris is Christoph, if I pronounce the name right. Um, if they are going to patch the the Intel driver. I know that they release a new one, but it doesn't include the patch for the SRIOV, but includes some changes for the, um, sorry, for the loading of the modules and those kind of things. Um, okay. Do you have a link handy? Yes. One second. I don't know where this is. Oh, so at least the attention is out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. 100%. Great. <laughs> So, while you dig that up, does anyone else have uh, P PCI password related issues, uh, hardware issues, anything in this category before we shift gears? I'll take that as a no. Patrick, you available? I see you're muted. Okay, that's the PR. Thank you. Let me copy that. Thank you very much. Uh, boom, boom. Let's see. Take a look. Patrick M, you between calls by chance, and where did it load? I don't know. Where to watch that again. There, thank you. No problem. You're a little quiet. Oh, thank you. You're super quiet. How about now? Much better. Welcome. OK, good. Very much. So uh, and thank you for posting that. Excellent. OK, uh, the topic of BeehiveCon has come up a few times. You time, 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 times, times, times. Again, so. That's great. Would. Let's see. Yep. Okay. Time, time, times would be appropriate because that was the topic. So, uh, if you look at a modern conference schedule, there are a lot of beehive con, a uh, beehive talk such that the whole conference dedicated to it is a bit, perhaps a quaint idea. And out of several conversations came the notion of a Euro bar, bar beehive con, not to be confused with the current movie. Uh, a, a, an informal event, like a bar camp, like a unconference where we, perhaps folks like Santiago and myself, put our labs online for remote access and we run through, be it open issues and configuration challenges and new ideas. Jan, you had some thoughts on that, maybe some examples of other events that were successful coming right off the heels of CCC. Well, CCC events, one of the differences is at least at the bigger ones that there's an on-site co-location where you can just drop your stuff as long as it isn't a fire hazard. So basically, it has to be in a proper case. Don't show up with a shoebox and an atom board and some cobbled together wires. Uh, but this allows people to just bring projects and hack on them on-site. Basically, the sky is the limit, so uh, if you tell the organizers ahead of time, they will probably get you 40 gigs or more per port, but that's uh, unrealistic for a small conference without the proper um, connections to make it happen. A uh, question briefly, is anyone present here driving or taking a train or surface transportation to the event? 
train from Lisbon up to Cumbria. Cumbria. Okay. But you probably don't have family with servers in Lisbon. Okay. So That'd there's be that. A negative. Okay. And the advantage is that we don't care about synchronizing distributed uh, backup collections, but um, want to hack on projects. So the bandwidth to the lab environment doesn't have to be high, it just has to be reliable enough and fast enough for interactive use with SSH yep. between the event and the lab. The problem is that. Beehive without nested virtualization uh, requires access to a uh, metal, so you have all of the out of band management problems. Of course. Well, well, I'm sure we can each VPN into our respective labs. So, that said, uh, if we were to have some wish list items right here and now, what are some examples? Um, Michael, one question. Uh, this is yes. something that you, you want to do completely remotely. I'm asking this because our lab is based in, in Ankara uh, for now. Um, um, it's more like a it's more like a training center, so we can even if we if you want, we I can try to ask permissions if we can host everyone there. Uh, we have tables, we have machines, um, and we can, we can spend I don't know one week there or whatever. Um, if that may help, I can ask a question. Uh, Ankara's Spain it's, or um, Turkey. Turkey. Oh, Turkey. interesting. Oh, no yeah. kidding. Um, yeah. That might introduce tr travel issues, but. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't if the lab is where and we just have remote access to the lab? We have remote access. Yeah. We have one gig pipe all the time that is stable is it... and all out of hand. So that's available also, guys. If you want to a use it. A gig is more than enough for package exactly. installations and stuff. Yep. And yeah. <laughs> You don't need this ridiculous connectivity of, hey, can I get two times 100 gig to my no. uh, um, network scanner because I want to try a strategy to scan the IPv6 internet in three days or something? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. So that said, okay. uh, we can probably have some nice lab resources on hand and we have a few weeks to configure them and make our wish list. So mm -hmm. what would be on our wish list, everybody? Uh, Including documentation on come target layer. <laughs> yes. Okay. Wish list. Uh, CTL docs. And yes, uh, Jan, you and I started a list here. Maybe I should punch that bad boy up. Okay. So let's ignore who has what. CTL docs are there. <clears throat> uh, okay. Then. Great. Uh, CTL as a backing store uh, slash documentation. Uh, of course, we've been discussing PCI pass through. So that, in any forms, especially if we have new, 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 we have yeah. Yep. Good enough. Okay, it's a different webcam. Great. Uh, Jan, what you said about grouping devices is actually quite interesting, and there might be some pretty clear rules to follow, and hopefully the OS tells us those grouping. So uh, that fascinates me. If I can spell it, groupings. And then uh, level three routing on virtual machines, is that correct? Oh, here we go. Yeah, I was asking, do, are we having issues? Are you seeing issues there, or? Uh, Jan, after the last call, described a hypothetical, hyper-secure, isolated virtual machine. So ah, good, good that you. got interesting. Isolating. So, I, oh, sorry, sorry. It was my fault I, reading. I was sorry. What, with Beehive in a jail, what I was uh, hinting at is that while Beehive already uh, sandboxes itself on FreeBSD mm. with Capsicum, mm -hmm. it still has a bit of an attack surface. Uh, so the uh, idea here would be um, to put it in the jail, which is supported, but how tightly can you lock down the jail mm. with things like uh, 
said making sure that the jail can't even fall because you said the number of processes in the jail to zero and then jail attach to mm -hmm. it and stuff like this so that beehive uh, can't create a child process. There are only a few libraries in there. There's only the Beehive executable in there. Disable the IP stack in the jail, mm. okay. so that uh, Capsicum only can communicate on behalf of the guest through the tap or uh, the Mnet device or whatever connectivity you mm. want. Mm. I've been messing around with this a bit. But it's can, not really... can you share any script, John, on that one? Do you have any example that I don't have to not read around? Not yet a working like... one. I'm working on dynamically generating the DevFS rule set to expose only the minimal set of devices. Cool. So that I only uh, expose the tap uh, symbolling, the um, top and index uh, dev uh, character device, the uh, console devices, and MDM, but only one side of the uh, NMDM. So then uh, VM device, stuff like this. And yeah, that, that should work, but it takes a little bit of tuning. The problem is that I haven't found a great way to dynamically allocate the rule set number, so right now it's just hard coded in the jail.conf. Oh, okay, to, gotcha. Uh, and, but it works, the minimal jail is like 3.5 megabytes or so on disk. Okay. Save it for Portugal. <laughs> Save it for Portugal. Yeah, that's, that's really cool, mate. Yeah, leave it. <laughs> yeah. Right now I still need the um, UEFI firmware, and that's about it. Okay. Okay. And I will say uh, any virtualization topic, be it Zen, be it JL, or and be it Zones, be it uh, Beehive on Illumos are all fair game. So go ahead. What came up yesterday in the um, Jazz call is the idea of uh, having a smallish um, overlay network using mm. the XLAN mm. or uh, give an EFA IP mode as mm. members on a bridge, then have the Beehive guests attached to the bridge as well. And normally mm. you would now have the problem that if you use the bridge uh, with spanning tree, you would have a terrible uh, yeah. network overlay where everything yes. just flows along the spanning tree. Yeah. But in, as long as you have full connectivity on the underlay, which can be expected, uh, you can uh, solve the problem by disabling spanning tree or never enabling it, marking mm. all the VXLAN members on the bridges as um, private interfaces. Uh, private yeah. interfaces are a specialty of a FreeBSD bridge where a frame received on any private uh, member is never uh, forwarded to any other private yeah. member. This mm. prevents the loop from ever being closed. Mm. So what would happen if you have a broadcast or online multicast uh, frame, it gets flooded. Yeah. For all uh, the XLAN edges, for all other virtual machines, oh. whereby it would be learned. And um, after what you have perfect traffic flow. OK. Keep it, save it for yeah. Portugal. Uh, John, are there any science questions you think need to be addressed uh, or will you be giving a demo remotely of your nifty uh, nfs client built into a beehive virtual machine you should be a comedian michael ah. <laughs> um okay. we are just getting to the point where i think we're about to try Running a new FS on a on a test disk accessed over the access mechanism. Awesome, Godspeed. Let us know how the group can help, especially if we're all. Um, and I'm sure once we have servers working, we have to go back and, and fix the code up. Okay. Um, any networking issues you think need some science or crazy ideas that we can explore? Um, in that environment. Not today. Okay. And Patrick, if you free up, do you know anything about the space we'll have? Is it a lecture hall? Is it a cafeteria? Is it a computer lab with machines we can use and hijack and <laughs> reformat? I'm not, re I'm not really sure. Uh, 
um, what do you call it? the? I have to see where because I think uh, NetBSD and FreeBSD have their spoken, okay. but I'm sure we I'm sure we can get a room or get something somewhere. And I've kind of been angling for uh, Ethernet in any place we do any place we do get any spaces we do get. I've been angling for Ethernet, so hopefully that'll be. Uh, Hopefully that'll be the case. We might just end up being uh, uh, shunted into, not even shunted, like we might just get one of the rooms that we've been assigned for the conference, but I'm not sure. really sure. Okay. Hey, no, no I worries. Can, but what I, what I am, I'm in constant contact with the, with the, uh, the coordinator on, on the ground over there. So okay. I will, I will kind of quietly while we're tra chatting about scanning gear and all that jazz, I will, uh, excuse me, streaming gear. Uh, I will ask if he's heard anything about BSD can be uh, okay. Beehive Con and, and you know what what sort of room. Okay. Okay. So, but long That's and a, short of it, I'll put a good I'll put a good word in for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do you know if there will be added costs for that? I do not. That is something I do not know. So the costs are typically well the room itself, uh, possibly yep. lunch unless there are many options to just break off to, and then. Heaven forbid we may have a little social event for those present. So that's typically it, about as fancy as BeehiveCon has ever gotten in Tokyo. Okay. And which day are you thinking? Uh, the Friday. Okay. Uh, room costs, lunch options, and and I've always thought, hey, if people, I can spell lunch, uh, launch, no. <laughs> Uh, if people are forthcoming with uh, funding, well, then I'll get fancier. But the minimum uh, costs are always a question. And BeehiveCon, I believe, has been mm, at most 50 as a fee covered, covering food and such. So I try to keep it free or cheap. Um, and if your name is, say, well, if you're at a large company looking at you, John Andrew and Santiago, if your uh, employers are interested in supporting things like BeehiveCon, like BSDCAN, like EuroBSDCon, like AsiaBSDCon, let's talk. I will get noisy about that super soon, but that's um, a bit parallel to this, although there's a lot of options of overlap. Anyway, uh, that's me being what, comedian? I don't know. Okay, other hot topics. That was quite good in so far as if we can narrow down those uh, super micro issues for both ourselves and Proxmox users, great. Um, I, that's, I'll just say that's enough positive energy on a BeehiveCon that yeah, I'm, I'm in. And uh, Patrick Housen was also interested in thinking, let's keep it a little less formal. And there you go. So other topics, questions, concerns, funny jokes. And for those who celebrate, the uh, recording of yesterday's call should be up at this moment. Uh, it was encoding the HD. I didn't get it out in time because, hey, I rewired my uh, office yesterday. So yeah, let's refresh that channel content for those who, again, celebrate. Uh, okay, yeah, there is yesterday's meeting. And uh, it was great to go through, say, the manual page and some documentation because the docs cannot be too clear. They can't. <laughs> uh, anyway, we are at 10 minutes to the hour, shall we call it good and move on and start planning, say, Beehive Con? Or did my audio cut out and you haven't heard a single thing I said? No, we've oh, heard yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. we, were, we were ignoring you, but yeah. Understood. We're okay. the developers. Okay, everyone, uh, talk to you super soon. That was great. And let's hopefully narrow in on those issues. And yeah, try it with a lower power device and then sap the heck out of the power with build worlds and other fun stuff to just see if you can get big over predicted. Okay. Super. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.
Bye-bye. Have a good day, night, whatever. <laughs> Bye-bye.